Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to my garden. August has been a very busy month in my household, and I finally feel like it's just starting to slow down. And today I got up early. It is Wednesday morning. It's August 21st. Um, it's about 7 a.m. And I woke up early this morning and I said to myself, I need to get out here. I need to showcase my August garden before the month is up. We've been busy during this month of August. I was away in New Jersey with my son Everett for a baseball tournament, actually two back-to-back -back baseball tournaments. And we were gone for about a week. And then we just uh, got home from vacation in Nags Head, North Carolina in the Outer Banks with my husband's family and had a wonderful time, wonderful vacation with them. And so I have not been in my garden. Um, I've probably been away from my garden more than I've been in my garden for the month of August, but I have to say there are beautiful things blooming, um, and my garden has thrived thanks to uh, a couple special people in my life. When I was in New Jersey, my husband and my son Tyler took care of the garden. They were so good at watering and keeping things looking healthy they knew it was important to me they all make fun of me and poke fun at me but they knew it was important to me so they they got the job done and then when we were in the outer banks my sister sarah my niece ella and maybe my nephew ryan not too sure um all came over and helped out and i came home and everything was just blooming and thriving and healthy and I was just so glad I was I was just so happy and now this week is a week that I'm getting my son ready to go back to college we take my oldest son Aiden back to college on Saturday so it's been a busy week just making sure he has everything he needs and we're going to be celebrating his 19th birthday and also my son Tyler's 15th birthday today in the evening we're going to have family come over so we will enjoy that and it's also a farewell to Aiden as he begins his sophomore year so lots going on um, but I just want to take a moment today and embrace my August garden and I'd love to share it with you you may have noticed in my intro clip that I had a heavier little sweatshirt on and it is rather chilly today, um, just compared to compared to what it has been. It's 69, well actually the high today I think is going to be 69 degrees. A mix of sun and clouds for this Wednesday, August 1st. This is my blue cushion English lavender that has all bloomed out for this season. You can see it's starting to push some new growth. This is a conga line sedum. Little gold star Rebecca. And in the back there, I have echinacea. This is the emerald gaiety euonymus. can see my clematis is pushing a few new blooms but for the most part is done for the season Let's see if we can see Let's take a walk into the backyard. Let's take a look at my climbing rose, the generous gardener. I think she's looking 
really nice. If I come around here, you can see that she has a really nice long mane cane. Beautiful. I'm just really observing it this season. I did prune it a little bit. Not too much though. Like I came over here, I'll show you. I pruned this one. You can see all the new red growth. Um, I just gave it a couple little snips before we went on vacation and came back and it looks beautiful. Just nice and healthy. The Snow Fountain Weeping Cherry is really weeping. I haven't trimmed it too much this season. We usually like to keep it trimmed up. It's pretty just the same. It's, it's meant to weep down to the ground. Let's take a peek inside. I trimmed up my Stella de Oro Daylilies. Not all of them, just the two under here because they were looking pretty sloppy. and. Um, I think they look much better trimmed. Maybe they'll push forth some blooms for the fall season. And I have my Hicks use back in there. We're coming on to the little lime hydrangea that is in full magnificent bloom. You can see it started to turn that shade of pink as well and it's just gorgeous absolutely gorgeous my container is doing well over here all of my containers really are doing beautifully And it's just one of the ornamental grasses from the front of my house. Almost looks like a weed. Wouldn't that be hilarious if it was a weed? A freckles coleus. There's a red salvia in there. Red salvia, freckles coleus. This is the Bada Boom mix for begonias that I got for free at a local nursery. Silver carpet, lamb's ear. And this is some vinca vine that's really trailing all the way down and even back behind all the way to the house and the Dichondra Silver Falls. Give you a close up look at that. So beautiful. You can see this is my peony here too. That's I have not cut down it and it is succumbed to powdery mildew. So we'll have to cut that down very soon. Moving on, this is my beautiful regular sized limelight hydrangea that is also bursting with blooms and absolutely magnificent. Let's take a closer look. Absolutely bursting with blooms and you can see the color. It's tinged with that pink color that we all love. I'm looking forward to cutting some of these. They're right at the perfect, perfect stage for cutting, I think. I saw, I follow another YouTube channel, um, a wonderful YouTube channel called Martin House Flowers. And from Martin House Flowers and she just cut a bunch of her hydrangeas and made a beautiful wreath if you're not following her go check her out Martin House Flowers and uh, oh and it was gorgeous it was gorgeous and I'm inspired to do the same the limelight hydrangea such a beautiful beautiful shrub Coming over here, we have the 
the golden vicary privet that has grown big and beautiful and golden yellow from the sun it's it gets full sun in this area and I have my early bird cat mint underneath that is not looking as good as it has in years past um, not sure why but we'll excuse that and I also have another limelight on the end here that's in full bloom. Looking gorgeous. Um, I do have an idea for the fall for this limelight. It is kind of closely planted to this privet if you see. And I would really love to. Um, my original thought was going to be to move it over. Like just slide it over in this bed. But what I would really love to do is just step over here. I'll show you. I'm just coming over to the back corner of my yard. What I would really love to do with that limelight, I would love, love to pull this hydrangea forward. That's an original endless summer hydrangea. And then I would love to put that limelight just in the back corner to kind of fill in and flower and bring that forward. And so we'd have just a little drift of the original hydrangea backed by the limelight. And I thought it would just illuminate this corner beautifully as well. Let me know what you think. Do you like that idea? I feel like, you know, with having a fence sometimes in the backyard, you want to take up that space and fill it up. We still have not planted out our new garden bed. That will happen eventually. This little lime hydrangea is doing pretty well. Still getting adjusted as it has some yellowed leaves. But it's blooming. This is my over the moon a still be that has grown nicely in this back corner i think it's going to be happy here my neon pink spirea and my window boxes which ha i have kept since the springtime which i'm actually just so amazed by the pansies and the uh, violas with that daylily in the center. That's been wonderful. I'm just swinging back here because I never really showed you this pot and how it's doing. This was my hummingbird loving container, which is absolutely beautiful and so robust. Um, the vermilionaire I couldn't believe I can't believe how big that got the vermilionaire is this orange with it has a little bit of pink coming out the tip tubular like flower that attracts the hummingbirds and I have seen hummingbirds saw one this morning just as I was doing my uh, intro I think I surprised him because he was coming around I think to um, check out the pots on my back patio the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry with the, the yellow petunia. He came around the corner and he just <laughs> flew right away. But I think I did capture some of some of him in the backyard there. But I've been really happy. This is the Osteospermum. Get a closer look on that here. That is an Osteospermum. Let's see, I can't remember some of these names now. Hold on. This is the Zion. Zion Purple Sun Osteospermum. This is the Golden White Butterfly from Proven Winners, right there. Like I said before, the Vermilionaire. What else do I have in here? Vinca Vine. There's some Blood Orange Nemesia also in here. That one got, you can see a little bit of a bloom right there, but that one really got taken over by everything else. And I also have a Lantana. Um, I think it's called the Cosmo Royale Lantana. That's also been 
very, very beautiful as well. Okay, let's check out the back side of the shed here. Everything is looking pretty good. I think I mentioned this flower before. This is just a compact white cone flower. I'm sorry, totally not impressed with that one. I may even pull him out. I don't know, there's nothing going on. I mean, I didn't know what I expected from a compact cone flower. It just was, it's just there. And this is the Dolce Wildberry Hookera from Proven Winners that I am a fan of. That looks like it needs some, a little bit of pruning deadheading I could get rid of some of this dead growth. I have endless summer bloom struck which is looking great getting a little bigger every season and that's always really good about it's just beautiful beautifully covered with buds and even the spent blooms are beautiful as well and here you can see <laughs> my mess of weeds from feeding the birds. I think I showed this in my last video. Not going to hide it. This is reality here, reality gardening. And I just realized that, wow, if your seed drops to the ground, it starts to grow. So not quite sure what I'm going to do about that, but it's they're very easy to pull out. Oops. Very easy to pull out. It's just a matter, well, that one's not as easy, just a matter of doing it. So I'm um, going to have to clean this up, you know, towards the end of the summer season here. We'll start to clean that up. Anyways, here's my bird feeder that I have enjoyed. I'm out of bird seed at the moment. I fed them right before we went on vacation. Oh, there's some up there. They're still feeding off that there and I think I do have a block that I can put in so why don't we go get that block of bird seed and put it in there while we're while we're touring the garden together let's see oh maybe I do have some bird seed in here I thought oh yeah it is pretty much gone but I do have one more happy finch um, let's see what, what this one is usually says what it's comprised of here let's bring it out I'll bring it out here gotta get some more bird seed feeding birds has become kind of an, ex an expensive venture as well okay I don't know if I can do this one-handed let me put this up here sometimes I'd like to leave it up there as well but we'll put it in the, the proper cage There we go. And I just gave them some fresh water this morning. And I'm sure these little birdies will be happy. Leftover seeds right in there. Okay. This is a container that's looking beautiful as well. All of my containers really have grown so much and have been so healthy. I have been fertilizing um, I have been using the Proven Winners Water Soluble Fertilizer, and I have to say I love it. I just reordered um, some more, but they were out of the Proven Winners, so I went with the Jack's Bloom, the Bloom Booster, I think it's called. So we'll see how I like that one as well. But I have to say that using a water soluble fertilizer has made such a difference. I have noticed because I have not fertilized for many seasons as well and I do notice quite a difference when you do um, do it at least I try to do it once a week I do try to do it twice a week at times if I have time but um, my blooms and my containers have looked absolutely beautiful this is just an ornamental grass with the dichondra silver falls and here I have the Peachberry Ice Primo Hookera. That's new this year that, I have, that I'm going to be planting out in the landscape. It has beautiful creamy white blooms at the top. And 
just a beautiful leaf. The underside, look at the underside color of that leaf. It's just really pretty. These are some containers I just have in this, the back corner here as well that are doing beautifully. This front container here, I have the Hot Pink Double Impatience with an ornamental grass as the thriller and some Vinca Vine with Dichondra Silver Falls. The beautiful morning raindrops. Really beautiful. And I also have another hummingbird loving container similar to the one I have that I had just showed you with the it's a purple fountain grass with the Cosmo Royale Lantana and Proven Winners and the Vermilion Air. I also have some beautiful Creeping Jenny. And I do have some Vinca Vine back in there as well. And I know I have some Osteospermum. Let's come around and see. I think this is a little bit different variety of Osteospermum. Okay, I had to hunt for it, but I found it um, in the container. <laughs> it was buried. This is the Zion Orange Burst Osteospermum. That's the one that I planted here. Kind of on its way out, but it looks like some of them, I have some spent blooms, but also some that are just starting. So not completely on its way out. It's just a beautiful picture with that double impatience kind of tucked in behind the ornamental grass. Really beautiful. Okay, it looks like my neighbor has some workers coming to their house. Looks like they might be installing a sprinkler system. I don't know. Okay, hopefully we won't be too much longer. I might have to do just the backyard garden tour and maybe I'll finish the front yard in another video. Sometimes my neighborhood just gets loud so early in the morning. It's only like 7.30 in the morning. Anyways, every, everything's looking pretty decent here. I've got my red twig dogwoods. And another change I'm thinking about making, I want to remove this one, I think, and put something golden back here. Um, as the backdrop for this Crimson Century Norway Maple. Um, I feel like I like this shrub. I have several in my yard, but again, the fence is a lot. And sometimes you just wanna like turn that fence green, you know, cause it can be kind of cold to look at. So I'm thinking about adding I mean, I have my little green wall forming over here of my three to green giants. I'm thinking about adding some type of a golden um, arborvitae shrub, maybe a few of them back in here, tucked back in here. And I think that'll look really pretty with the red leaf of the crimson century Norway maple in front of it. I don't know, let me know what you think. Sometimes I don't make the best decisions with my garden design plans, but that's just my current thought. Look at this beautiful blue, artist blue, azuratum. Look at that color, oh my goodness. I just put a little strip of those in, in, in the garden um, in the beginning of the season, and I wish I had more. Maybe I'll try to grow some this year, but I just really loved the block of color that that provided and they stayed nice and neat and just really was um, eye-catching.
Mr. Bowling Ball Arbor Vitae. Looking pretty good. I like this shrub as well. I am considering moving this one too. Ha ha. <laughs> I'm laughing because my husband will probably watch this video and be like, what? But I, I do like this, but I, I was considering the golden or the fire chief Arbor Vitae here or um, a different type of spirea. We'll see. It may not change. My Fat Albert Blue Spruce. Still looking good. Oh, I see a little, oh, a perfect spider web. Let's see if I can catch it on camera. It's just so delicate. Oh my goodness. I don't know if you can see. You can catch it in the light there. Beautiful. Okay, let's come down around this way. Here is the Vanderwolf Pine. Okay, let's take a look at my containers on the back retaining wall here by the pool. If you recall, we planted this container up together for summer back in June, and it's been doing great. This was an Ignite Coleus. It was combined with Baby Tut, which look how tall that Baby Tut has gotten. I like that size. I know some of the other Tuts they get huge. So I liked the size of this and I, I liked both of them as thrillers. And then I have a Nemesia and a Dichondra Silver Falls. The name of the Nemesia, oh, it's um, a Romance Mulberry Nemesia. Very beautiful little, little bloom on that. Look, it's like two shades of purple with yellow in the center. Very pretty. And here is my sedge. The name is escaping me. It will come to me. I'll put it, I'll make sure to put it on the screen. That, that's looking very nice as well. Come over here. We've got my summerific, very awesome hardy hibiscus, which has been blooming. It looks like we've got a, another couple of blooms getting ready, but that's been beautiful. You can see each of the blooms only last a day and then you get I can pull this see then you get these little puffs of pink <laughs> the spent blooms that fall to the ground and I guess some people could think they're unsightly looking I really don't mind them they kind of blend in after a while and you can just come come by and pick them up if it bothers you Crimson Cutie Barberry. Beautiful ornamental miscanthus grass. And check out this container here. This one has really filled out as well. Look at those colors, that's salvia. I got all those red salvia for free with a little purchase that I made at a local nursery. I also got the begonias for free. That's another, um, 
I got a bunch of those, the Bada Boom mix begonias. They were white and pink and some more silver carpet, lamb's ear, and just some Thinka vine trailing down. This lamb's ear is so soft, so beautiful. And I can plant that out, that's a perennial. Not quite sure where I'm going to put that. Gorgeous. This is Summerific Hardy Hibiscus, Hardy Hibiscus Perfect Storm. Look at that bloom. And I love the dark leaf. I think in my last garden tour, the Berry Awesome just had started blooming and the Perfect Storm wasn't exactly open yet. So here you can see the Perfect Storm blooms. Okay, I can hear the neighborhood starting to wake up. Still loving this dogwood is so happy in the spot. It's humongous. Really beautiful. Excuse my lawn chairs. We tuck them in between these arborvitae sometimes. These are my emerald green arborvitaes that are looking wonderful. Nice and lush. And let's see, my Autumn Joy Sedum. Let me just come down and you can see they're starting to change color. And you see the touch of pink that's developed. They come out like a really beautiful green color initially. And I love that green color too because I really do love green in the garden. But now you can see just the, a light dusting of pink. And it's almost like a pink, um, like a deep rose color, burgundy pink, I guess. I don't know if I'm explaining that correctly, but it'll really start to become more apparent over the next several weeks. And this is usually a plant that succumbs to powdery mildew for me, but looking pretty good right now so hopefully that'll stay that way my Hamlin fountain grass I have a lot of green going on in this area here this is my northern gold forsythia I have three here they're all greened up They've already had their yellow excitement in the springtime. And the Jack Frost Heartleaf Brunnera. Have another one over here. And right back here, I planted something last fall that's just starting to bloom. It's a Rose of Sharon from Proven Winners. And it's, it's starting to bloom here. So that's exciting. It's still kind of small. And it looks like it might be in need of some water, possibly. It looks a little bit stressed, but it did start to bloom. Let me just come over here and get another little shot of those blooms. And it's almost like a ruffled double, um, double bloom, it looks like. I'll put the name up. And here we have another limelight. It's in full bloom. My candy mint crab apple tree. I did plant a little sedum here that I think got totally squashed or pulled out on accident. But I do see, was that part of it? I'm not sure. That might have gotten totally 
removed not and i know it'll probably come back next year but this was the proven winners rock and grow midnight velvet i can't remember i think i got that on sale clearance it was like barely cost anything so we'll see what happens next year with that the blue mouse ears hosta looks like there's spiders living in there forming their webs but they have bloomed out but the the little cabbage like growth looks beautiful in the fall and then they start turning like a yellow color um, and i'll eventually cut those down I do feel like my daylilies are looking quite sloppy this year, and I think it's because they're so large, they do need to be divided. Um, but this guy, he's looking kind of sloppy. Oh, goodness, look at those little ornamental apples <laughs> on the crab apple tree. Isn't that beautiful? And there's my winter creeper, proven winners, Euonymus. Uh, winter creeper with our golden flame spirea and more of the same on the other side you can see another container I have the morning light miscanthus here this is the Sedona sunset coleus And again, the red salvia. And honestly, those salvia, when I got those for free, it was just a small little plug. And that was, it just became so prolific and robust. And another bada boom begonia. And this is Graceful Grasses Indigo that I just have on a pot, in a pot, excuse me. Graceful Grasses Indigo. I have two on the back patio and that will grow and be beautiful into the fall season. And I'm super excited to show you my raised bed with all the zinnias. Can you believe it? I grew these from seed, direct sow. And these are Persian carpet. I don't want to get the shadow in my shot there. These are the Persian carpet um, zinnias. These are like um, kind of just like a golden autumnal color to the Persian carpet. And I haven't cut any of them yet. And <laughs> mainly because they just really have started blooming but I also I didn't want to cut them because I'm having family over tonight so I really wanted them to check out my zinnias before I give them a, a you know a first cut let's see this is green envy and then these are just the cut and come again variety are all different colors really beautiful and I know if anybody has grown zinnias before you know about the wiggle test but if you happen to be a beginner you might need this piece of information but when you do go and prune you know cut your uh, zinnias for the first time you want to do a wiggle test and all that it is all that means is that you wiggle the flower with your fingers and if this area of the stem is floppy it's not ready to be cut but if you notice this one is stiff so this guy's ready to be cut let's see let's come over here and look at this green envy let's do the wiggle test this one see how it's like i don't know that one might might just about be ready not quite sure um let's look at this guy here i think i think he's just about ready as well let me come around to the other side i'm going to find an example of one that's not quite ready i 
Ooh, I think a lot of these are honestly ready. That guy is flopping a little bit. Okay, this is a perfect example. Okay, you see how this one's kind of flop, flop, flop compared to this guy. Okay, so this one is not yet ready to cut. This one is ready to cut. So you see the difference? I'm really proud of myself. Really proud of just trying new things. And that's really what I want to do every year in the garden is to continue to learn and to try and to share with you and encourage. Who doesn't love to be encouraged? I just have a bunch of bunch of things here on the table that I will share. This is my this here is the centerpiece that normally lives on this table. I have some asparagus fern with a red geranium and diamond frost euphorbia. That's, that's usually the only container that sits on this table, but right before vacation I had potted up. I got um, some more things for free at a local nursery and I wanted to get things potted up before I went away. So in this container here, here I have a gold cypress. I normally keep this inside, but I just brought it outside and planted it up. I'll bring it back inside when we get close to colder weather. Um, I also have some snapdragons in here. This is a snapdragon here. This is a snapdragon here. Turn this around. I think, okay, I have the tag here. This one is the Snaptini Burgundy Bicolor. It's called Snaptini Burgundy Bicolor Snapdragon. And this purple flower I got for free that was looking, it was like pretty much dead when I got it. <laughs> but I looked at the tag and it was a proven winner, so I knew it could look beautiful. And it's called Violent Night Lobularia. So I just potted it up, gave it some love, and it's just, it's an annual. It's not a perennial in my zone, but I brought it back to life and I'm sure it can look beautiful for the rest of this month and into September. And I also have a hardy geranium that I got for sale here. This one was also looking pretty rough. What did I get? This one was $5. Um, I don't think, it's not the geranium roseum. I don't have the tag for this one, but I think I have it inside. I'm going to have to make sure that I put the name up. It could be a Roseanne. I can't remember now. I'll put the name up if I have the variety of this hardy geranium, but I'm a big fan of hardy geranium, so I'm going to, you know, I wanted to tuck some more in here and there in the garden, and I also have another, oh, here they are. I think I have the tags over here. Let's see. These are also some other hardy geraniums. Let's see. I think this is the one that I just showed you, the Max Free Cranes Bill. Hardy geranium. So I have three of those, and I also got this one here, the Bloody Cranes Bill. I don't really like that name, but <laughs> the Bloody Cranes Bill hardy geranium as well. And let's see if we can take a look at that little bloom there. I thought I could tuck those in as well. They were also on sale. They were normally, they were $5, normally $16. So I thought that was a good deal, a good deal. Good morning, Lucy. These are the containers right on my back patio. The one on the left here I planted up 
earlier in the season in a video. This was my shade loving container, although at the moment it is getting a little bit of sun, but that won't be long lived. I do have a um, Riger begonia in the back right corner. And that's looking beautiful. This is the Fishnet Stockings Coleus by Proven Winners. And then there's um, this Coleus here is called Wedding Train Coleus. And I also have an asparagus fern, sorry, the sun, an asparagus fern there as well. Let me see if I can, there we go, come over here. And this container has been doing well. It's a self-watering container that I got from Home Depot many years ago. It's made from recycled tires and you just water the very corner of the container and just keep watering it and watering it until I water it until I see little bits of water drip out the bottom corner there and that's when I know it's completely filled and I usually fill it about once a week. And here in this container I planted up a begonia. It's a proven selections. I think it's called angel red begonia that I also have um, paired with some of that wedding train coleus. And this is also a shade loving container, even though it's getting a little bit of morning sun right now. I also have these same containers on the other side of the, the slider here. Get that shot of the the limelight oh, against the blue sky is just beautiful. Just beautiful. Same container here with an American flag on the 4th of July. And I think my neighbor is putting in a sprinkler system today, so might be getting a little bit loud. I may have to just maybe do a quick front tour. Maybe I'll do the, con the containers on my front porch. It just depends because they just turned on a really loud machine here. So, <laughs> oh my goodness. We'll see. So just planted up this little container on my back patio right before I left for vacation. Um, these three taller plants, I have three of them in here, are Siberian iris, blueberry Siberian iris that I also got on major clearance at a local nursery and I got this fiber optic grass for free. It was totally dead. It's an annual, but it was totally dead and brown looking, but it was free. So I figured I'd pick it up. So I planted this up and I know the grass will look good into the fall, um, another couple months. So I figured just for some added interest back here, that would be beautiful. And I'll show you a picture of what the blueberry Siberian iris is supposed to look like. And I will be finding a spot for these guys in the garden as well. Don't you just love clearance plants? And this is the last thing I think I'm gonna show you back here. And these are my containers. You may have noticed them in my first intro shot. <laughs> This, um, these containers look absolutely stunning. I'm so pleased with how these look. Um, I have a clematis in the center and I do not know the variety of the clematis. I do know that it does bloom twice in the season. It's a very early blooming clematis and then it kind of looks kind of not great for a little while and then it comes and flushes out again. And I really think what helped this clematis this season is I finally, you know, underplanted it. I was a little delayed in filling these pots with annuals, and I finally underplanted it with the Supertunia Vista Jazzberry um, by Proven Winners that really has done and looks beautiful. And also with um, this yellow petunia, 
Uh, I don't have a name for that one. It didn't have a tag. It's not a proven winners, I don't think. But And then just some vinca vine that I haven't trimmed at all. And it really, usually I trim my vinca vines, but they're just flowing all the way down and to the ground. Um, and I also have used the water soluble fertilizer in this pot. And I do notice quite a difference in how my pots look this year. It just really looks beautiful. I've used mainly the Proven Winners water soluble fertilizer. Um, but like I said, I just also purchased the Jack's Bloom Buster and that's what I fertilized with um, just last night. So really beautiful. Okay, I decided to just come to the front and do a quick front yard garden tour as well. Like I said, my neighbor is having some work done, putting in some sprinklers, so it could get loud here in a minute, but I'm gonna do my best because I'd really love to just showcase what's happening here with my containers and my front porch. Here is a shot of my front porch and my containers have really done just really well. Um, I'm, I'm just happy with everything. Let's take a look. This is the um, Rock and Fuchsia Salvia that I have that's really just exploded and has looked beautiful with the Sweet Caroline Sweet Lime Potato Vine, the Dichondra Silver Falls, and I did have um, the Banana Cherry Petunias. Now those have kind of died off, especially in this container here. I have a, a couple of other ones that are still um, evident in some other containers, but for whatever reason, those ones died off in this container, but just pulling out some of the yellowed leaves there, but they look beautiful. And then this container here, my blue stem grass with uh, Creeping Jenny and the Diamond Frost Euphorbia. And I did have some Calibrecoa here that stopped blooming. I had the Goodnight Kiss Calibrecoa. Um, that's no longer blooming. So a lot of green going on here, but still very beautiful. And let's see. Oh yeah, the Diamond Frost Euphorbia. I wanted to make sure I had the right name for that. And then just some Lemon Coral Sedum. Tried and true Lemon Coral Sedum. Always looks beautiful, just in a pot. And same thing on the other side here. I'll just give you a shot at these containers. Just gorgeous, just beautiful. Oh, and the backdrop of my American flag. I love that. Okay, and this front porch container is amazing and I absolutely love it. It's my favorite container this year. I think I have mentioned in other videos, I mean, it just has exploded and it's huge. And every year, you know, you just kind of put things together and you hope things work out. And I just love this combination. Um, I have, oh, I hear Lucy. Can you hear Lucy? She's wanting to come out. Hello, girl. Just wait for me there, okay? Wait for me there. I have the Sunset Sedona. Sedona Sunset Coleus right here. This is the Freckles Coleus. And then I do have some of these petunias lived in this container. I guess they didn't get drowned out by everything else. This is the Banana Cherry uh, Petunia. And then the, just the Dichondra Silver Falls and the darker green Vinca Vine and also the, the lighter colored Vinca Vine as well. And oh my goodness, I just love this container. Look at this petunia here has a little more, a little more purple in it there. I also have an Empress Wu Hasta, believe it or not, tucked in the back corner here. <laughs> let's see if we can find it. It's just kind of hanging out there till I decide here. Let's come around this way, see if we can find it. It's hanging out in there until I decide what I'd like to do with it. But it's looking fine. It's protected from the sun. I know it gets huge and we'll put it somewhere soon. And also here I have my outdoor garden shelf. 
I got this off of Amazon, I think I've mentioned before. I can, oh, here comes that noise. I can link it in the description. I have my salmon double impatience right here. And I recently picked up this little sculpture. And who do you think that looks like? The description was puppy in boots, but I think it looks like my little Lou. That's why I picked it up. I couldn't resist it. And some more salmon double impatience with the vinca vine down below. And then I also have some hot pink glimmer, glimmer hot pink double impatience with the vinca vine. And I don't know what's growing out here. This, this started to grow quite sure what that is it could be a weed growing out here I wasn't quite sure <laughs> anyway I also when I was away in New Jersey I was well this is filled with water I gotta empty that um, I was just at Walmart and they had the they had these on major clearance these little pots so I picked picked a couple up just for to use on this outdoor shelf here And I'll just give you a shot of the front window box with my pansies and my violas. Still looking absolutely beautiful, like I already had mentioned. But let me just give you just a quick span. It's just unbelievable that these have been in since the springtime, since late March, early April. Gorgeous. Let me give you a quick shot of my front bed here. You've seen this before with my Spirea and my Emerald Gata Euonymus, but you can see that the Euonymus is starting to trail. This is the time of year and the month that it really gets going and trailing. As you can see, it's starting to interact with this um, dwarf Alberta spruce, and it's also starting to, it just sweeps up uh, against the stone wall there, which looks beautiful. And this is just an update on the underplanting that I have here. Just the compact rose sun patience and the lemon coral sedum. Doing well, looking beautiful. Thank you for joining me today for my August garden tour. I'm always happy to have you join me in the garden and I look forward to sharing with you again very soon. Take care.